What's up guys, Lifting here. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons as to why you should be playing Grim Dawn right now. Alongside these 10 recommendations, it is also worth knowing that Grim Dawn's newest expansion, Forgotten Gods, was recently released and even managed to become the number one global seller on Steam. In case you decide on purchasing the game or one of the expansions, it would make me very happy if you would use my Humble Bundle link, which you can find below in the description. It will at no cost to you help support the channel. Thank you very much. Let's get into it. Reason number one, the atmosphere. Grim Dawn is set in this dystopian timeline where monsters from a different plane are invading Cairn. Throughout your adventure you will travel through lots and lots of different zones like the old Arcovia with bandits roaming the wastelands trying to take over, or the Astarkarn road where depravity is all consuming and the harsh reality of starvation lurks around every corner. Or one of my personal favorites, the city of Malmuth. A once prosperous large coastal city that has been completely overrun and is now swarming with enemies. There are lots of different zones in Grim Dawn and the art style together with the small tidbits of lore in the form of journal notes spread throughout the zones works absolutely amazing together and really manages to present this grim, lonely, oppressing, dark and evil feeling that this game seeks to portray. Reason number two the pace and difficulty. If you're coming from Path of Exile or Diablo 3, you might at first find the pace of Grim Dawn to be slow. For you Path of Exile veterans out there, you might actually recognize that the pace of the game is pretty similar to early Path of Exile versions. And for you guys who like the pace of Diablo 2, I've got good news for you. It feels very much like that. Pace and difficulty goes hand in hand in ARPGs. And one thing I unfortunately think that people often overlook is the detriment to increasing the speed of the game at the cost of a mechanical complex encounter. For instance, when an ARPG gets to be as fast like Path of Exile currently is, a lot of the challenge and difficulty drops. This is because monsters no longer get a proper chance to react to the player. So no matter if the monsters have lots of potentially deadly attacks or abilities, these won't matter because they will be dead before they can use them. Unfortunately, this ultimately leaves us with a game where it matters more if you can manage to click and delete the monsters before they can attack you and get their damage in. This is not the case in Grim Dawn, however. The pace might be slower, but via that, some really fun, memorable and engaging encounters manages to challenge you on your ability to probably time your cooldowns your ability to disengage and re-engage to ensure your survivability, strategically moving and positioning yourself to avoid having too many enemies surround you or to avoid various ground effects appearing beneath your feet and thus eventually overwhelm you. In Grim Dawn you have to accept that the monsters are actually dangerous and you should fear them. When all of this is said, this is an ARPG and don't worry you can build some very powerful characters and at some point you're going to feel very powerful and what used to be a threat will be much less of one eventually of course. But you will no matter how good your build is, always be able to find proper challenge in the game. Reason number three, it's about the journey. Unlike many other games in the genre, Grim Dawn is not just about getting to endgame. It is just as much about the journey as it is about the destination. A big reason for this is very much due to the difficulty of the game. Because Grim Dawn will provide adequate challenge and has such a diverse monster roster, you will find yourself on a frequent basis stopping up to reanalyze your character and its weaknesses. For instance, when I reached the Malmeth outskirts after having traveled through the ever encroaching swamp lanes in Ogdenbach, I found myself continuously getting taken to Brown Town over and over as I was repeatedly getting destroyed by enemies that suddenly dealt a ton more damage. More specifically, ethereal damage. So in order to combat this, I had to go back and reevaluate my character. Could I change my gear to get more resistances and possibly more life? Did I spend my devotion points? wrong and if so could I move them around or should I perhaps farm some materials to craft some ethereal resistance flasks to grant me a temporary buff and thus better my chances of moving forward or should I approach it via a completely different way. You get the meaning. It is the constant reassessment of your character's strengths and weaknesses and how to overcome them that grants you purpose in the game and the fact that there are so many ways to do so. 
And you'll have to do exactly that if you ever wish to reach endgame, which is exactly what we're going to talk about now. One of the most frequent questions I get in my Twitch chat is from people wanting to know how the endgame is in Grim Dawn and what there is to do once you have completed the story content. And that is an excellent question, because we can all agree that it can feel rather anticlimactic spending a lot of time on your character completing the story and then not really having anything meaningful to do after that. Fortunately, Grim Dawn has plenty of meaningful endgame content for us to spend our time with. As you're doing the story content in Grim Dawn, you'll encounter various factions with each their own agendas. By helping these people, you will gain reputation with the faction. By increasing your reputation and reaching certain thresholds, you will unlock useful rewards such as new quests and various discounts. But even more importantly, access to unique components and augmentations to further improve your gear. However, the most interesting aspect of reputation farming is in my opinion making enemies. Similar to how you can increase a faction's liking to you, you can also make them hate you. Now, why would you do that? Recently, while I was playing on my Templar, I decided to really piss off a group of no-life thugs that goes by the name of Cronley Skane. And it was not just because they are culturally inappropriate, but because by reaching respectively despised, hated and eventually nemesis status with them, I unlocked additional enemy and hero spawns in that area where they reside, effectively increasing the quantity of enemies and thus potentially increasing the amount of loot I could get back in return. Reaching Nemesis status was especially rewarding, as that unlocked the relevant Nemesis boss of that faction for me to farm. And that comes with some powerful benefits, including lots of rare components and legendary item drops that I can, you guessed it, I can use to further improve my character. Furthermore, specific factions and areas of monsters tend to drop items that increase certain stats. Cronley Skeng drop a lot of fire-based gear, and since my build is fire damage based, it made it all the more worthwhile farming this particular faction for my build. This is what in Grim Dawn is referred to as the endgame hero and nemesis farming, and it is pretty damn fun. And there are many more different nemesis bosses than just the one I just mentioned. But don't worry, there's plenty more endgame stuff for you to do besides reputation farming and nemesis farming, including running specific routes for rare chest spawns, farming bosses for specific gear, including super bosses, which is some of the hardest content in the game. And if that isn't enough, the Crucible and the Shattering Realm DLC comes with each their own version of an endless dungeon type of content. In the Crucible, it's your job to survive for as long as possible, while endless waves of monsters will try to defeat you. The further you manage to survive, the greater the reward you will get at the end of the Crucible. If you die, the rewards are significantly diminished. It is, however, also possible to stop in between waves and collect the loot you have accumulated during your run if you are uncertain as to whether you can survive it or not. Well, I guess I need to say the Crucible constant can actually be accessed at low levels too. It's not strictly endgame. But when doing so at low levels, it's typically mostly used for gaining some quick devotion points for then to head into the campaign and take the leveling from there. It is only during endgame and high levels that you're doing the Crucible to really push the limitations of your character or to farm gear. The Shattering Realm is another take on the Endless Ledge Farming gameplay mode. Unlike the Crucible, you will here move between many different zones and it is your goal to defeat as many monsters as you can within a certain time limit. By defeating monsters, your progress bar fills up, and once it's full, you'll be taking to the next zone. If I remember correctly, you will at every three zones enter a boss room with a boss for you to defeat, and by defeating the boss, a friendly NPC will show up and ask you if you wish to delve deeper into the Shattering Realm, or if you wish to claim your rewards for your current progress. Besides these endgame elements, there is of course also the traditional RPG endgame approach with planned farming routes with high monster density, lots of enemy hero spawns, etc. So as you can see, Grim Dawn has plenty of meaningful, challenging and in my opinion really fun content to do. As a matter of fact, I honestly at the current time think Grim Dawn has the best endgame content and most varied endgame content of any ARPG on the market. Which naturally leads us to reason number five as to why you should play Grim Dawn. Reason number five, the loot. Now we've touched briefly on this topic, but there is a detail to this 
that I wish to highlight as one of my favorite aspects to this game, namely loot tables and targeted farming, which is something Grim Dawn compared to other modern ARPGs does much better. So what do I mean when I mention loot tables and targeted farming? In short, it comes down to having specific types of monsters or specific bosses drop specific items as opposed to any random monster being able to drop any random item in the game. When I play an ARPG, I understand that RNG is an integral part to the game and it is in big part that which makes farming items exciting. That said, this gets even better when the player is left with a certain amount of control over the RNG aspect. For instance, I recently wanted to upgrade my weapon for my Templar, so I looked up the various weapons available on Grim Tools and found Bartholomew's Gavel, which is perfect for my build. But how was I going to get it? Well, fortunately, Bartholomew's Gavel drops from a very specific monster in the tomb of the Archon at a decent enough drop rate for it to be a realistic endeavor for me to take upon myself to farm. By knowing where to go and which enemy I have to farm, I get a sense of purpose for my character. The difference here is that while RNG is still a huge aspect of the game, it is giving the player a way of controlling the RNG. Another aspect to this in Grim Dawn is the idea that certain factions or types of enemies drop specific types of gear, such as the example I used earlier with my Templar primarily needing fire-based gear. In that case, I would greatly benefit from farming the Cronley's gang faction as these have a high chance to drop exactly that type of gear. So not only are certain unique and legendary items dedicated to a certain monster, but even rare gear, due to weight affix rolls, can be farmed in a controlled RNG environment, making it a very approachable and satisfying way of obtaining gear for your character. Now this is not to say that the system is perfect and that any type of gear belongs to a loot table or needs to be targeted specifically via certain enemies and nor should it be. Generic RNG is fine too, as long as it is supplemented with controlled RNG. As a matter of fact, it's probably the majority of items that has a chance of dropping randomly from any type of enemy in Grim Dawn. But there is still enough items that are allocated to a loot table for it to give the player enough control of the loot dropped to make the farming satisfyingly approachable. Many of the items you can find in Grim Dawn also come with unique and interesting attributes that in some cases can in its entirety change how you further continue developing your build by changing how a skill works, how it's scaled, adding or reducing a cooldown modifier, making it able to proc a chain lightning on a crits or generating a shield when a certain amount of damage has been received and so forth. Overall, the loot system works great in Grim Dawn. It has that classic ARPG feel to it with lots of generic numerical upgrades, but with enough of the interesting items to make it feel exciting to engage with and proper loot tables to make it feel approachable. Reason number six, the depth and complexity. Besides people asking for how the end game of Grim Dawn is, the second most asked question I see in my Twitch chat is how complex it is compared to Path of Exile and how the learning curve is. The short answer is that in its own way it is overall just as complex and deep as Path of Exile, in some places even more and in others less. The complexity of the game primarily lies in figuring out the many, many different ways to scale and build your character effectively while also understanding and analyzing the threat of the content you will be facing and of course figuring out which content you should be farming. Similar to Path of Exile, you have offensive and defensive stat attributes. Health is pretty straightforward, but you also have to make sure that your defensive ability and thus your chains to evade attacks and avoid critical strikes from monsters are adequate, not to mention having enough damage absorption to mitigate incoming damage as you get hit, as that is obviously rather important for your character's overall survival. You also want to ensure you have enough damage to prevent the fights from dragging on for too long and to have enough clear speed potential for it to feel efficient and fun. And damage in Grim Dawn can be scaled in lots of different ways. The most basic damage type would be physical damage, but as with resistances that you can use to increase your survivability to the various elements, similar damage types can also be used offensively. 
That means you can play as a Cold, Lightning, Fire, Acid, Poison, Piercing, Bleeding, Vitality, Aether and Chaos damage type of a build. Or maybe a mix of them. On top of that, each damage type has its own relevant damage over time damage source that you can scale by itself. Fire damage, for instance, is associated with burn damage. Physical damage has internal trauma damage. Vitality damage has vitality decay damage and so forth. And as I mentioned earlier, a big part of the complexity of the game is figuring out how to properly scale these attributes to get a successful build up and running. And primarily, that is something you would do via the gear you obtain, the skills you pick for your build, and via the devotion tree. And this brings us to the seventh reason you should try Grim Dawn. Reason number seven, the build diversity and character progression system. When you start a character in Grim Dawn, you start by picking the gender and if you wish to play a softcore or hardcore character. It is not until you gain your first level that you will be met with the choice of picking your first mastery, also known as class. If you have all the DLC, you will be able to choose between 9 different masteries, each with their own unique skills. At level 10, you will be able to choose a secondary mastery, and you will thus be able to combine the two with the goal of creating synergy and unlocking specific skills you will be using for your setup. As you level up in Grim Dawn, depending on your level, you will gain between 1 and 3 skill points and 1 attribute point. Before you can select any of these skills for your class, you need to invest a certain amount of points into the mastery. Each point invested into the mastery bar provides a flat stat bonus, but does also unlock access to the various skills available for your mastery. That means if we as the occultist here wish to use the summon hellhound skill, then we are going to have to spend 10 points in our mastery bar to make that skill available. Unlocking it, however, does not mean you automatically obtain the ability. To do that, you'll have to invest additional points specifically into that skill. The more points you invest, the stronger the skill becomes. So let's say we want our Hellhound to be able to deal more consistent area damage. To do that, we can see that the Ember Claw passive further down the Occultist Tree provides a 200 degree attack, allowing up to 5 enemies to be hit by the Hellhound. For us to get that, we have to invest an additional 10 points in the mastery bar to unlock the passive and we can from here then spend as many points as we'd like. As we have spent points in our mastery bar to unlock the Hellhound and its passive upgrade, many of the other skills have also become available and it is your job to figure out which skills you want to invest in and consider how and via which damage sources you wish to scale them to ensure they become strong enough to deal with the content you're facing. This can seem a bit intimidating at first, but for a minor currency investment, you can respec your points and try out completely different skills in case you wish to do so. The only thing you can't respec once you've made your choice is the actual masteries. In case you want a different mastery combination, you will have to start a new character. A quick tip here for any potential beginners is to go to the Grim Tools website and open the build calculator. Here you can check out all the abilities of each build before you make a decision. The amazing thing about Grim Dawn is that you can at any time combine anything and make it work as long as you know how to scale it effectively. There are so many different ways to build a character and it is this amount of build diversity and the potential thereof that makes creating new builds feel very encouraging and exciting to take on. However, selecting your skills is only one aspect of scaling your build. To further improve your character, you will be making use of the various devotions and their respective powers found in the devotion tree, which by itself deserves to be reason number eight as to why you need to try out Grim Dawn. Reason number eight, the devotion tree. The devotion tree is frankly speaking the best skill system I've ever tried in any RPG. Throughout your journey in Grim Dawn, you will encounter desecrated shrines. It is by restoring these that you will gain devotion points for you to spend in the devotion tree. You can get a maximum of 55 devotion points to spend in total. Looking at the devotion tree, each constellation consists of a certain amount of nodes, each providing different bonuses to your build. These can range from generic stat bonuses to interesting abilities triggering based on certain conditions. An example of one such is the Meteor Shower found in the Ulswind's Torch constellation. This ability has a 30% chance on attack and works by covering a 2.4 meter radius of falling meteors, providing tons of extra physical and fire damage to the enemy. To trigger Meteor Shower, once you have invested the point, 
you then have to select which attack you want it to activate off. And for the sake of presentation, I will simply link it to the Hellhounds and have them proc Meteor Shower on their attack. The important thing to understand here is to figure out which of your skills makes most sense to pair with the many various constellation trigger bonuses to make the best use of them. There is a lot of interesting trigger effects available in Grim Dawn, and it is in big part due to these that progressing the Devotion Tree feels very engaging and rewarding. A big part of using the Devotion Tree correctly comes down to efficiency. Since you only have 55 points to make use of, you want to make sure to spend them on relevant constellations to your build. There is a catch to this, however, and that is for you to gain access to the various constellations, you need to meet their affinity alignment requirements. For example, for us to even begin allocating devotion points into Ulsuin's Torch, then we need to meet the affinity requirement of having 8 points in Chaos Affinity and 15 points in Eldritch Affinity. To achieve this, you will have to, via completing other star constellations, generate enough Eldritch and Chaos Affinity to eventually unlock the Ulsuin's Torch, you will have to find a balance between spending devotion points that provide you the most optimal stats for your build, while taking into consideration the affinities they unlock by completion, and via that opening up for new and potentially stronger constellations. This is a constant but really fun struggle in my opinion, but there's no denying that this to most new players can feel very intimidating and I fully understand that. I went a long time without spending my points simply because I didn't want to deal with it at the time. However, just as with the points invested into your skill abilities, devotion points can also be respect and I personally believe the best approach is to simply try it. Just pick whatever constellation that benefits you at that time and as you progress your build further, re-evaluate and adjust. Respecting them is no big deal. Alternatively, you can find lots of different build guides to follow on the forums and that's probably a good idea generally speaking anyway for first time players. The ninth reason for you to try out Grim Dawn is due to its community. Despite the game originally releasing in 2016, Grim Dawn still has a very active and growing community. This means people are theory crafting, creating build guides, farming guides, giving suggestions and ideas on how to approach the game. Even if you're going to play the game as a single player experience, an active community ensures the game remains relevant by sharing feedback, thus providing the developers a chance to respond to this and enabling them to continually improve the game. It is also via the forums and an active community that the trading aspect of the game takes place, in case that is something you wish to do. Grim Dawn, unlike Path of Exile or Diablo, is not realm-based, so to speak. It's more of a single-player or intimate smaller group experience with the potential to trade with anyone in the community who puts their items up for sale on the forums. I personally play Grim Dawn primarily as a single-player experience, but I trade and barter with players from my Twitch channel and it works great. Doing it so really builds that community feel as you get to know the people you're trading and interacting with. I do of course welcome any of you guys who might be watching right now to tune in and join us if you're interested. The Grim Dawn community has from my experience also so far been very friendly, helpful and inviting. It is fortunately not suffering from the asshole syndrome that many bigger gaming communities inevitably ends up suffering from. The tenth and final reason you should try out Grim Dawn is due to the fact that the game supports mods. Via the various mods, you can add several minor quality of life improvements to the game, such as auto loot of components, differently colored text for item affixes to make it easier to differentiate between the roles. But there are also more ambitious mods, which seeks to completely rebalance and add additional masteries, provide additional game content and so forth. I'm currently running three mods, but I will make a separate video showing you how these work and why I think you should use them yourself. And that is 10 reasons why I think you should try out Grim Dawn. I have people on a daily basis coming into my stream telling me that they have fallen in love with this game since its newest expansion launch. And I am with them entirely. Grim Dawn have had me completely hooked these past weeks and I believe and hope for many more to come. Grim Dawn and its expansion are buy to play content. In case you wish to purchase the game, then please allow me to ask you the favor of purchasing it via my Humble Bundle link. It is down in the description. 
This goes to support my channel and charities around the world. Humble Bundle is completely legit and you have nothing to risk by purchasing from this site. Via your purchase, you can automatically and seamlessly redeem it on Steam too. If you decide on using my link, then thank you very much. And if you do not, but still decide on giving Grim Dawn a shot, then I wish you the best and I hope you'll end up liking the game just as much as I do. Find me in the community over at twitch.tv slash liftingnerdpro or join our Discord server. We are more than happy to help you with any questions you might have. Thank you for watching and bros, do you even nerd?